What is up, guys? Hey, I got to show you guys this video. Our pastor at Faithful Word Baptist Church mentioned the flat earth conspiracy theory last night. And uh, they posted a segment on YouTube of it. And uh, I'm just going to let it play. Check it out. Uh, here's another little point um, that I didn't even think of. And it just absolutely crushes the flat earth conspiracy. Watched on the airplane. And I'm watching on the airplane. And he's going through the fact that in the summer months, the sun never goes all the way down. Now, you've heard of Alaska and Norway being the land of the midnight sun, where in the summer, the sun never goes down. Or in the winter, they'll have months of just total darkness. Well, here's the thing. It's the same in Antarctica, same exact phenomenon, where you have months of just total light and months of total darkness. Now, these flat earthers will sit there and say, oh, well, we have this model of the earth that works. It's a flat earth and it's like a disc. And then they show the sun like going around in a circle above the disc. Going like this. So basically the sun gets closer to the middle in the, in the summer and then further out in the winter. Okay. So in the winter it's going around like the outside of the disc and then in the summer it's going on the inside of the disc. And they say, see, this explains all the seasons. This explains everything. This explains Alaska and Norway and all the phenomena. But here's the thing. The Southern Hemisphere, again, is completely ruined because they don't even believe that Antarctica is real. So they believe that Antarctica, if you think about it, because remember, they're peeling the globe out. They basically believe that Antarctica is like an ice ring all the way around the outside. That that's the edge of the dome. You know, the dome and the disk. Because we're in a giant snow globe, according to them. So basically... You've got this ice ring. So in that model then, if you're on the edge of that ring and they got the sun going around in a circle, you'd basically just have the sun go by you for a few hours and be in darkness the rest of the time. Think about it. Is everybody thinking? I know this is complicated stuff. But here's their disc, right? So if the sun's going around in a circle and you're on the edge of that circle in Antarctica then you'd see the sun pass you by and then you'd have to wait a while, wait a long time to see it again. Sometimes it'd be closer than others, brighter than others, higher in the sky than others, but that's what it'd be. Well, this guy, I'm watching this film, nothing to do with this foolishness of a flat earth, but I'm watching this film and I get around, you know, minute whatever, and I nudge Paul and I said, Paul, this movie just disproved the flat earth. <laughs> because I said, the guy, this is what the guy does. The guy literally does a time lapse where he points the camera at the sun and he follows the sun all the way around for 24 hours. He shows the sun go around him and it kind of goes up and it kind of goes down, but it goes around him. Okay? So basically, think about this. If the Earth's a globe, which we know to be true, it makes perfect sense. He's on the bottom, he's in Antarctica, and so there it is. The sun's going around. Now, it's not that the sun's going around him. It's that the earth's spinning. The sun's here. The earth spins. So from his perception on the earth, the sun is going around in a circle. It's the middle of summer. You can check the time. It's, uh, what, just after 12 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock midnight, though. He documents it!
You can watch him do a time lapse where he shows the video of the town that they're in in Antarctica and you can watch the sun go around. It's like he, he condenses it down to like 60, 70 seconds. But according to the flat earth model, that wouldn't happen that way. But according to the globe that we know to be true, it makes perfect sense. That was an awesome sermon. Um, basically, he touched on at least two different points. I mean, for one, you know, the guy that went into the Antarctic, well, he's filming the, the sun never going down a certain time of year, just like it can happen at the North Pole or, you know, up there in Alaska, I should say. So uh, even though, according to this, it was with the sun being way out, you know, it's a spotlight, right? And it's coming over here. It should be like, what, daylight 10% of the time, if that. And it's going to be dark like 90% of the time. Because think about it, the sun's way over here, right? It's not going to, it's a spotlight sun according to the flatties, right? How is it going to shine light here when it's way over here? So it's going to be, this this territory is going to get light. And then it's going to be gone for all these hours before it comes back around, you know. And it's, it's going to light up once a day, but it's just like they must be making it move faster and faster once it gets out to the outer perimeter because, you know, it's got to return within a day. So it's it's traveling by more miles um, per hour than, you know, than it does miles per hour. And I mean per hour of time, you know, in 24 hours out here than it does here. So there's a big problem with the flatty map right there. That's going to be off. You're just, I mean, because according to their spotlight sun, they explain that's why it just disappears, even though it never goes over the horizon. It's a spotlight sun and it only shines this much and, or whatever. So uh, none of that makes any sense, which I'll go over in other videos. But so they got that aspect of it. The other thing that he didn't mention in this clip, but it's in that sermon, so I advise you to go watch it, is that, uh, look at this. When they basically unzipped the globe earth and basically stretched out the south pole and made it the you know all on the outer perimeter like this and basically laid out the map they just stretched it out they made like south america and africa disproportionately larger than the other continents as it is on the globe model well here's the problem with that flatties <laughs> if you go by the scale of how many it's, it's just throw the distances from like point a to b and point here to here, here to here, all these is, is way off. But yet, it's accurate on the globe Earth model. And this is proven fact because people travel to these distances by air and by sea. And there's this, you know, this distance to go like from here over to here is not what it is on the flat map. All right, I have got a legit map here on the left. This is legit. The distances are accurate. People use this all the time for travel. I mean, there's no conspiracy here. People would know if this was like just grossly off, which the flat earth map I put next to it is grossly wrong, especially down in the lower hemisphere. And of course, it's going to be wrong up here too. But they say, oh, nobody travels up here. Well, people do travel, guess what, from here to here and, and stuff like that. These distances, there's no conspiracy here. So I'm going to show you just a real basic, basic proof that this is cannot possibly be right. I'm just going to make uh, just this. I'm just going off the inches that are built in on Photoshop. The inches are just matching the blank canvas, okay? So it's nothing, it doesn't have to be like miles or anything. This is a unit of measurement, getting a standard by going from the thickest part right here, just in Northern California, just down to the very tip of uh, Florida right there, right? So I'm going to start this right here and go down just to the tip of Florida right there. It gets to be about two inches, 2.087. So just two inches. And I'm going to go from the little tip here, right where the land ends, the tip here of Southern America, and just hit the tip of Southern Africa right here, right? So you just basically tip to tip, 3.9, 3.8 something, basically almost four inches, just under. So basically, the distance here is just almost double this distance here, but not quite double, right? Well, let's do that same thing over here on the flat earth. Let's go to the thickest part of Northern California, down here to see where I'm going, down here bottom of Florida about one inch 1 1.040 that's an inch right just getting a scale all I'm doing is making a scale by saying this is an inch to go from here to here let's see how much how many inches it is from here to here so if we go from here to here it's about four inches 
four times the distance. So basically, according to their flat Earth map, it is twice the distance from here to here as it is on a real map. How do you how do you answer that? How do you answer that? And you can see what look just with layman's I've put a line here and a line here. This line's not even twice as long as that line, but yet this line here is four times the distance of of there. Try it for yourself. Not making it up. That was uh, that's pretty obvious. Didn't even think of it when I was looking at that. So you need to check out the rest of that sermon. Uh, it's called Zechariah 12. It's basically based on Zechariah chapter 12. It goes through a book of the Bible on Wednesday nights and uh, starts chapter 1. It just goes through every chapter, and then they start a new book. That's what Wednesday nights are at our church. And just he just happened to touch on the flat earth because of uh, what was in Zechariah 12. There's a couple more points made about the flat earth than there is in this five-minute part. Uh, I think is when he covers the distances. So watch the sermon, and you'll see all those parts. And uh, it's irrefutable. Flat Earthers just got crushed.